BK asks Nigerians to back Tinubu, says politics time is over as he and Sheyi Makinde visit the president-elect. And President Muhammad Buhari approves postponement of 2023 census. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakon. Governor Yesung Wiki of River State and his counterpart in all your state, uh, Sheyi Makinde, paid a courtesy visit to the president-elect Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu at the Defense House on Friday evening. The development is coming two months after the former Lagos State Governor was declared winner of the contentious 2023 presidential election. Tinubu had polled 8,794,726 votes to defeat the People's Democratic Party candidate Atiku Abubakar and the Labour Party flag bearer, who got 6,984,520 votes and, of course, uh, 600 million, or 6 million, I beg your pardon, 101. 1,533 votes respectively. Now, the two governors had a light-hearted chat with Tinubu, who was excited to see them. And shortly after the arrival, the duo had a closed-door meeting with the president-elect, along with the chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum and the governor of Kebi State, Atiku Bagudu, his Jigawa state counterpart, Abubakar Baduru, and the former governor of Akiti State, Kayade Fayemi. The details of the discussion is yet to be announced to the media. But joining us to break this down is uh, Charles Otu. He is a public affairs analyst and is Zikil Nyaituk, former governorship candidate of the ADC in Akwaibom State. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and good evening. Good evening, Marianne. Thank you for having me. Good evening and thanks for having us. Great. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Nyaituk. Let's look at... All of the things that built up to the presidential elections and, of course, the one that threw up uh, the president-elect, many things, especially the G5 within the PDP. I mean, you and I have had conversations about the inner workings of the PDP, the travails of uh, the, the chairman of the PDP at the time, um, who still is, obviously, um, and, um, and, and what led to Governor Wike pitching his tent um, with the APC presidential candidate, surprisingly. Uh, many people are saying that um, with this visit, it is a clear slap on the face of the People's Democratic Party, even as he is still a member of the party. What are your thoughts? Um, the very first thing I would like to say is um, Happy Workers' Day to all the workers in Nigeria. As you can see, today I was fully kitted, decorated <laughs> as a senior comrade. Mm. And uh, I think this is one of the very few times in my life that I would like I'm putting on a cap because I have a natural cap. So mm -hmm. if you permit me, please permit me to uh, remove yes. this cap and we have to <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, to the issue, you know, we've talked about this severally. And... Um, I think politics is getting redefined in a way that I don't know whether it's positive or negative because there's something called anti-party, you know, activity. And um, when we've had a, a, an election as controversial as the last one, and then your candidate, the party, the candidate of your party is in the tribunal, and you go to felicitate, as it were, with um, the opponent, because he's not yet, you know, um, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You can call him the president-elect, but there's still a process um, that will lead to his formal installation or investiture as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. While this is still going on, and you are still a member of the party, and you are still a governor of the party, I think that we are starting to redefine what anti-party is all about, and what is ethical within this context. I believe that when you become a president uh, and um, your governors owe you certain loyalty, certain allegiance, but when you are president-elect and your party is in the tribunal, I'm not sure it's so much ethical. I don't think it's really. The Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. I don't think that I can really honestly hail the activities of the two governors. 
Uh, but you see, well, the Bible is not necessarily the playbook of politicians in this part of the world, especially when we look at Nigeria, where we say our democracy is nascent and we're still learning and growing. Even though a lot of people point to the American democracy and say it's 200 years old and, and, and um, you know, that we should be copying from them. But then we have a different way of playing politics. Now, going back to what you said and redefining what anti-party is, let's delve into how we play politics in this part of the world. But before we do that, let's listen to what Governor Wiki had to say, and then you could help me answer that question. have come and done. The winner has a match, and therefore it is um, necessary for all Nigerian to rally around to give him the necessary support for the interests of uh, Nigeria. And everybody is expecting uh, everyone can wait till uh, May 29th to see that the president has been inaugurated, and then from there he keep uh, the ground rolling to make sure that Nigeria gets what they expect. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that he has what it takes to turn Nigeria around. I have that uh, confidence. So back to you, um, Mr. Nyaitok. I was asking, the way we play politics in Nigeria, what does it say about our democratic process? And like I said, we call it a nascent democracy. But what does it say about how we're developing our democracy in this part of the world? You, you see, um, yesterday you must have seen in the news that um, the Labour Party and a coalition of civil society, some of us elders, met together to look and review uh, by right what you should have is a fair contest where there must be winners and there will be losers. Where the winners should be allowed is like, uh, you know, Aqua United is playing with uh, probably Nasarawa United, okay? When Aqua United flogs Nasarawa United, at the end they shake hands and then Nasarawa will say, don't worry, you'll come on return. They go and like put themselves together. They can afford to shake hands because it was a free, fair, credible contest. So they're like, okay, you won. But when you have a presidential election that is fought with so much irregularities, the whole world says, oh, this wasn't good enough. At the end of the day, you're going to have a lot of aggrieved people. So while these people are grieving, they take the legal option of going to the court and exhausting all the processes which could lead to a cancellation of the of the election which could also lead to a reversal of whoever is the winner or the loser until we get to the last bus stop which we are advocating that that bus stop should come before the swearing in of the person the moment you get to the last bus stop and the person is sworn in the right thing to do is for everybody to know that well you know, there's another time that we come into governance. But for him to advise that we should all rally around when the process is legally still ongoing, is ill-informed, is uh, unnecessary, it could actually be provocative hmm. and absolutely unwarranted. So you're saying that this, because you, I was paying attention, close attention, you're saying just as many naysayers that this process was not as legal, as clean and fair as it should be. And that's why you feel that Governor Wiki is on, in the wrong with the statement that he made. I just want to be clear. Ab ab absolutely so. Because like I said before, and I repeat it, in an election, you must have the mindset that there must be winners and there are some people that will not win. You must have that mindset. No matter, you see... But the president-elect was declared that. winner by INEC. They returned no, him no, as the winner. Process. Clearly. No, no, no. It's a process that is not yet concluded. You need to know election process starts with indication of interest and ends at the Supreme Court judgment, not at the swearing-in. No. The election, because there are people, look at Think of um, the Imo state governor. He was sworn in. He was in office. And then at the end of the day, the Supreme Court says, no, you are not the rightfully elected person. This other person was. And what happened? He had to leave the office. He can't say, oh, I've been sworn in and that is it. No. The electionary process does not end at swearing in. 
it ends at the final judgment of the Supreme Court. That's where it ends. So it is um, ill-informed, like I said, and, you know, a, a lack of what I always refer to as emotional intelligence at a time like this, for you to, I mean, you've done your worst during the election. So just leave it and let the legal processes get to a logical conclusion. And some of us are of the opinion that nobody should take the laws into their hands. Let's get to the legal, you know, arena. And whatever is the final judgment, let us accept it and then make the process better and get a better result um, um, in next time. Okay. But for now, I think what PDP and Labour Party are doing in particular, I think others are also there, is right, is legal, it is their right. And let us allow that process to be exhausted before, even when somebody has been sworn in, it's not final. Nigerians need to know that. Okay. Let me come to you, Charles. Um Looking at um, that video and, of course, this, the statements that was credited to Governor Wike saying that it, it, politics time is over. It's time for us to rally around the man who's the president-elect uh, for him to... Uh, he also said that he has um, trust uh, in, in his capabilities to deliver uh, the dividends of democracy for Nigerians. Uh, and that's me uh, paraphrasing. Um, do you think that Governor Wike spoke a bit too early, being that he's not necessarily a member of the ruling party, neither is he the, a member of the APC? Um, should he have waited till after the swearing in? Uh, what is your take? Well, well, well for me, thank you. Uh, uh, Architect Nyato has bared uh, his mind very sufficiently. Uh, for me, I don't think Governor Wike bared his mind too early. Uh, First of all, putting into account the role some of them played. Some of those roles, inglorious as it were, in the last presidential election. I think what they are rather doing is that they are trying to come out from their cocoons of pretensions. They have been in their cocoons pretending that, um, well, they didn't really play any such um, heavy role, but they are saying that it is time to share the meat. And the more they show up, the more they won't be forgotten. And they're actually thinking they can rally around support from uh, the various parties, that's the PDP, for the APC president-elect, the APC uh, presidential candidate, and now president-elect Bolatino. Uh, Why you may think he doesn't know what he's doing, what the both of them, both uh, Governor Sheyma Kinde and Wuke are doing, is uh, what they call strategic positioning. They are positioning themselves for what may be the eventual outcome in terms of appointments. Of course, if you take into account the fact that Governor Wike did not contest for the Senate, he didn't. He doesn't have any addresses going back to, unless he plays the politics of the center. So he is trying to keep into the politics of the center for all for their own selfish um, interests and reasons. So for us, uh, for the common Nigerians. I agree with what um, uh, Nyaitok said, that the process is not concluded. But as for his, as for his decision to meet with uh, Tinubu, he has the right to do that because the PDP has not been fair in disciplining uh, these uh, G5 governors. The PDP have also not been fair in not only telling them, in, in trying to curtail them, to bring them to a level where these governors will understand that it, 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 is, it is actually against the spirit and letters of the constitution of the party. So for a party that has allowed this G5 governors, particularly yes on which to grow the level of which he has grown, uh, I mean, you could expect what uh, Wike did, because Wike is now trying to say, I am even above suspension. Of course, you read about the attempt to suspend him, and um, even his allies, and how they went to court to get an injunction to restrain that. And even PDP trying to reverse themselves on the people they are suspended. So the party has not been firm in disciplining, disciplining its members. So what do you expect from people who are putting their, 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 what they would call their best for, the, for a ruling party against their own party that is in opposition? So for me, they are moving around trying to strategically position themselves. Mm. So the world will not think they did not stand with uh, Bola Tinubu. 
before he's get, he gets inaugurated. And okay. of course, you know, when he, once he's inaugurated, a lot of interest and a lot of things begin to panic. So it is not for Nigerians to take away the message and discard the message they are spreading. Okay. That people should rally around, Nigerians should rally around the, the president elect. For us, the process is not yet concluded. All right, let me, ask, let me ask you, Charles, because you, you're saying that, um, I mean, because uh, Governor Shea Makinde has gotten, um, you know, his certificate of return. He's returning as, uh, you know, a second-term governor in you know, your state. So he obviously is not pivoting to get an appointment. But let's, let's focus on Governor Wiki. Now, you said that he's strategically positioning himself for something in the government. Let's look at the politics of it. Um, there are people who have been there by Bola Tinubu for as long as possible. And as he has said over time that he's been a kingmaker and it was his turn to be the king himself. Now, how do you feel that these people who have been working with the president-elect over time while Wiki was in the opposition, um, if he were to be, you know, um, strategizing for a position, how do you think, how easy do you think that will be for him, knowing that there have always been other people who stood by um, Bola Tinubu? Well, uh, like uh, Nyatok tried to say, it, it is morally reprehensible. All things can be lawful for him, but he cannot be subjected to that. But that's not the way politicians think. So for him, what uh, Yeso Wike feels is that he can get a cut of a deal. He doesn't care about the moral aspect of his stand. He had been caught in several videos which had gone around the social media very virally before the election. Speaking and burying his mind, saying that he can never, never, ever support a party like APC. And uh, those videos are there. Uh, Marianne, I'm sure you must have watched some of those videos too. When some of us see those videos, we just laugh because it actually shows the reprehensibility of the lack of morale or the the lack of ethics in politics, because if they were not speaking as politicians and acting and taking Nigerians for what they take them to be, what a waste of wicked should have done. He says he feels that the PDP leadership is crumbling and the party needs to be rebuilt. He should have rebuilt this party for the G5 governors to take, even as former governors, to take charge of them, and then they can begin to deal, do real, real opposition from there. But the interest is at the same time. If he gets a deal as a minister of health, a minister of uh, works, for instance, he feels he has something in the card for him for the next four years. So that is why they are not thinking about the questionability of the credibility of the Tinubu election, the presidential election. They are thinking about what is in it for them as principal stakeholders in the, in the, in the, in the, in the presidential election that has put their state, they have, they have put their state on the line have put in efforts to either manipulate or convince the people to vote for the presidential candidate, the APC, whom they all support. So I think they are only coming out from the cocoons now because they feel this is the right time for them to make both statements okay. to say, yes, we call on Nigerians to support you. So it's not for Nigerians to take the message for what it is. That is politicians acting and deviously playing the dangerous, selfish scripts. Okay. That is what... Uh, Ms. Etok, let me come back to you. Um, just, just to you know, piggyback on what he said. Um, if the PDP, as he said, has not been very strict um, in, as to dealing with uh, the likes of Governor Wiki, I mean, we've seen other people who were dismissed or suspended on the grounds of anti-party activities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but in the case of the G5 governors, we've not seen that same stern position. What does this signal to other members of the party who have been seeing what's been playing out? And does this signal an open-door policy for the level of truancy that's being displayed by the you know, G5 governors? And who's to say that that's not going to be the order of the day in the next election cycle? You, you, you see, um, sometimes I find it a difficult thing to know where to start on these matters. Some days back, I was on one of the national um, television stations and then they asked me where the Senate president should go. Generally, people think it should be between the South South and the Southeast. And I told them, as a former national chairman of a party, you want to give members of the party chance to 
quote, die for the party, knowing that when you work for the party, you will be rewarded by the party. But if you work for the party and then another person gets a reward who did not work for the party, at the end of the day, in the next election cycle, you ask yourself, why am I killing myself when they will give it to whoever they wish? So on account of that, that's when I said they should give it to the South South, uh, where Mr. Uh, Senator Fabio kind of um, is a leader, as it were, within that zone, because of the exigencies, because of emotional intelligence, because of what makes sense in the larger interest of the party. Mm. Now, put that aside and come to where we are today. There is a party called APC in River State. They have a candidate called Mr. Toye Cole. This candidate, incidentally, himself and myself, we were together at uh, Madame Obi Ezekosili's 60th birthday, and we had a lot to talk. He's worked so hard. He's done so much for the party. If at the end of the day, he does not get the mandate to be the governor of that state, and then somebody who cut a deal with Mr. Ashiwaju if he's sworn in eventually as a president and he's remained as a president. That man is made a minister against all the people that have stuck with the party over the years. Now, Mr. Bola Ahmed Tinubu will have to ask himself, am I coming in as a standard politician to begin another round of political dealings and, you know, in Nigeria? Or am I coming in as a leader that will have to rule the country by good conscience, by best corporate practices, by the larger interests of the Nigerian nation, by being able to bring certain things to teach people what leadership considerations should be? He has a very big decision to take. Mm. And if he comes in as this master schemer, kingmaker, uh, um, fantastic politician who cuts deals to, to feather his nest and, and, and let whatever is in his better interest rule against right judgment, then I am afraid that we are in for another rough ride. I want to end on a little thing in the Bible there was a guy called King David, and he was going to meet his brother that was coming to meet him. There was some kind of um, misunderstanding or on, 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 on interesting situation. And they asked him to go faster. You know what he said? He said, in my camp are children and pregnant women. If I overdrive them by some distance, I may lose some. So you guys go. Let me take these people at their pace. What does that show? Leadership consideration of the larger interests of the society over personal interest. And I think that this is where we Nigerians need to stop a lot of these analyses and everything and accepting what is wrong and stand up and say, leader, office of the citizen holds you responsible. What you are doing is morally irreprehensible. It is ethically unacceptable, and we expect to hold you to a higher standard of morality and leadership than you are showing. Mm. Uh, let me come back to you, Charles. Um, looking at you know what Mr. Nyachok has said in terms of you know um, selling out, positioning, strategizing. Let's talk about betrayal because you see whether we like it or not, the PDP and its presidential candidate does feel betrayed by the G5 governors and whether they delivered or they did not deliver and to whom they delivered. Um, again, back to the issue of Governor Wiki, how trustworthy, how easy will it be to trust a Governor Wiki in a camp full of APC people who have always worked with the uh, president-elect? Um, knowing what he had done, cutting corners, cutting deals, in the words of uh, Mr. Nyaitok, um, who's to say that he's not going to turn on the... Um, you know, APC or uh, the president-elect uh, when the waters begin to rage? Well, th thank you very much. Uh, first is that I will take a, a, a brief reflection 
on reverse politics because when I listen to Akita Kinya talk, talk and I just my mind just cast back immediately to 2007 when Peter Dele was used by the PDP. Uh, Rivers has actually always been the cash cow of returning presidential candidates. In 2015 transition, uh, Chibika Meishi was used by Buhari and the APC then to launch themselves to power. So it wasn't even anything surprising when uh, Tinubu decided to approach Wiki and Wiki fell for it. At the end, what Wiki should be asking himself is where has this my brother ended? Uh, at some point, it was as though Tibika Meiji was even the beautiful bride in the presidential quest for in the quest for APC ticket. Architect uh, uh, Nyatok is talking about uh, Tonyeko, but I think even uh, 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 people like Ameshi were there and they have been there for the party. They have given these are enemies that have enemies that the party had morally created in the state before people like Muke came to take the credit and the glory. Now, for him, uh, we get to know he's going into a night of long nights with, uh, going to bed, he's going to bed with uh, uh, people who, who we predue him for who he is. That is the fact that uh, even though he says yes, Atiku betrayed him, he returned the betrayer. At the end, you're talking about the moral aspect of politics that makes one to look at you and give you considerations and assignments based on his understanding of your antecedents. So this is a very tempting moment even for Wiki. Uh, he can end up becoming the Minister of Works if uh, that is if Tinubu prevails eventually as president. He can end up even replacing Amesi as uh, or taking over as Minister of Transportation as Amesi then was. Amesi then was. But what is there for uh, a lesson for, uh, for Rivers to take is that my people, the people of Africa will not the point state, used to say that being conquered in three wrestling boats, three wrestling festivals, brings deep shame. Rivers has been used in 2007, 2015, and then 2023. At the end, where did these two that had gone before him, where did they end? Huh. The, the promises made to them were death refused. The answer is no. Did they end in glory or in shame? The answer is they ended in shame. So how is he also going to come back to... The PDP tribunal, the election petition tribunal that has been shifted to Abuja to begin to support uh, 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 Sifubara, who was the presidential uh, governorship candidate of PDP and the governor elect of River State as it, as it is now. What morality is he going to be standing on those two tripods to say, look, uh, give us this ticket to defect? What happens to the people like Toyeko and others who have been in this party and who are elections under the party yeah. before them? Yeah. So this is where the lack of morality for APC speaks volumes. And for people like us, uh, we don't take such, even if they consider such people for appointment, such people are not going to be taken very seriously by Nigerians because we already know that their interest is all for and for them, all for themselves, and the few cronies they have around them. Mm. Well, before we go, because we're, we're out of time, quickly, um, just as you said, the knives might come out, um, you know, Whatever, whichever way the pendulum, uh, you know, swings in this instance, um, just as you said, um, Mr. Ch Mr. Otu, if, if, let's say, for example, Sim becomes, uh, you know, sworn in and then decides to, you know, move to the APC, um, there are people who they're at odds with in the APC in River State. Um, same thing for a uh, Governor Wike, but I'm going to ask, um, you know, um, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Nyaito this question lastly before we go. If Wike is by any chance to get something out of this, um, I'm just wondering, do you see movements within the APC anytime soon? A lot of movements, being that there might just be a lot of, you know, um, frayed nerves as a result of, you know, if he does get something. Okay, um, let me start by um, acknowledging the very, very um, wise contributions from Mr. Charles Otu. Um, that's uh, he's actually an Akwaibom person because Otu is an Akwaibom name. That's why he's sounding that intelligent. So his name should actually be actually Charles Otu because that's an Akwaibom name. But um, that said, <laughs> that said, you see, um, nobody is a fool. I, I, I'm very close to a lot of um, APC members, and um, they, 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 what happened to um, Amechi 
will likely happen to uh, Mr. Um, what is Wike on the double. Why do I say so? You see, the man Buhari and the man Tinubu are not are two different types of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, there is something that that Mr. Tinubu knows about people. He, he understands betrayal. And he knows exactly what Wike has done. And I want to tell you that even if Wike is a minister, within one year, there's going to be a problem that is going to create a scandal just for him to, to be exited from the place. I don't know what sort of what sort of agreement he's going to have and said, I must be a minister for four years. I don't know how that's going to work out. But at the end of the day, there's something that Mr. Otu said, which I, I found very instructive. Why must we in the Niger Delta always be the cash cow for these people? Do they really respect us for who we are or the text to exploit us for the resources that we have? Was Wike approached on account of his superior capacity and intellectual, you know, um, prowess? Or was he approached because he had the money and could turn and do the daily job? Even mm -hmm. my government, why was he made the chairman of the campaign uh, committee of, uh, of, of the PDP? I think we in the Niger Delta need to really come back and sit down and ask ourselves very critical questions on how our resources must be deployed at national level. Well, on that note, I want to say thank you. Charles Atu is a public affairs analyst, and Ezekiel Nyaitok is a former governorship candidate of the ADC in Akwaibom State. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, we appreciate all your thoughts. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Well, up next, we turn our attention to the postponement of the 2023 population and housing census. Stay with us.